Hey guys, so I've got this graphics card here, the Asus R9270X, and um, well, let's spray paint the housing. The first thing to do is to disassemble the card. This Asus R9270X only has four screws that hold the housing to the PCB. But that's not all. After four more screws and glue, the heatsink can be removed, allowing access to these fans, which can also be removed. Finally, the DirectCU2 logo. Next step is preparing. This is frankly as important as painting itself, yet easily overlooked. Fine sanding is required on housings with glossy surfaces so the paint can grab, though the mainly textured nature of this means it's almost good to go. There's just a personal cosmetic issue, these faux screws. So let's file them off. I can't deny the risk of messing this up, so for doing mods that require removing or adding material, go very slowly and take your time. The whole surfaces are then finished with rough then fine grit sanding to smooth them out. After treating the other glossy surfaces, the housing is cleaned to remove all oils and dirt. Last step of preparing is to cover areas we don't want painting, like part of the housing's design, uh, to keep the original surface and have a two-tone colour scheme. Its success will depend on the sharpness of your knife, quality of masking tape, and the amount of time. Ah, now it's ready. Let's talk about our paints. A primer helps with adhesion and durability of our paint, especially on bare material. Next is a spray enamel from Plasticoat in an ocean kind of blue, and if you wish, a clear top coat be it lacquer or enamel. Like most things in life, you get what you pay for. Before picking up a can though, we need to talk about safety. Goggles and a face mask are essential even when painting outdoors and when indoors, have a means of ventilation. Let's thoroughly shake the can and begin. Being cautious of overspray, it's best to do several light coatings than a few heavy ones. They'll also dry quicker. In terms of technique, do spray across the length of your piece for an even coating. We'll let this layer dry before spraying another one. The primer hasn't properly covered the sides, thus we have it on some wood to raise it up. <laughs> on switching to the plastic coat, the amount of paint this sprays uh, comes as a slight shock and have almost oversprayed this particular side. Dust in the air is an inevitable reality of DIY spray painting. Once dried, do take care of these bits by sanding them down with a 1200 or 2000 grit, so very fine. And also acknowledge that spray painting in itself is quite a risky thing. Expecting perfection on your first, third, fifth go is well, unreasonable. Trust that you'll do a good job learning something every time. On the topic of drying times, I only have one advice. Have something else to do. This ensures your workpiece is left alone and can properly dry. This was previously the most difficult thing for me to overcome, but it's better to count in hours than minutes, or even better, in days. Speaking of which, this is the result three days later. I decided to leave the top coat out as the enamel is surprisingly tough, 
uh, but be careful though in removing masking tape as pulling them too quickly can cause the paint to chip away, so go over the lines with your knife once more. Signs of paint seeping underneath the tape means that it's of poor quality frankly, uh, but can happily be sorted with a cloth plus isopropyl and even more fine sanding. And here it is. Funnily enough, it still isn't fully dry, so long as you can smell the solvent. We'll leave it for a few more days. And sure, there are minute marks, but I'm happy with the overall surface. If you have the patience and can temper expectations, then you too can do a fine job spray painting and be proud of your results. And so that was my experience uh, spray painting a graphics card housing. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, uh, feel free to leave them down below. Uh, but otherwise, this is the budding engineer. Thanks for watching. See you soon.